Yo, that's all of lover and warm Pacific greetings to you all. Welcome to TJ's Creation Kit. My name is TJ and uh, today we're going to be jumping into making a retro FPS boomer shooter style video game. But yeah, uh, this tutorial series is aimed at beginners just because I wanted to make sure it would be easily accessible to anyone or anyone who was interested in game development and thought it might be too hard just because you got a code and all that. Well, good news for you, buddy, for the tools that we're going to be using. <laughs> no code, brother. I mean, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. <laughs> You're welcome. But yeah, I guess in saying that, what tools are we gonna be using? Well, bro, the engine that we're gonna be using, so easy, it's in the name, bro. It's called Easy FPS Editor CE. Emphasis on the CE, because it's a particular version we're gonna be using. Leave a link down below just so you can download it yourself, as well as I'll also, just because I'm a generous guy, you know, I'll be providing you guys with the assets that I'll be using during this tutorial so you can follow alongside me and we can kind of go along and make this project together and hopefully by the end of it we'll have something cool, pretty mean. And if we don't... But anyways, let's jump straight into it, eh? Uh, so if you clicked on the links in the description, you should have these two files here. They'll either be in your downloads or um, wherever you downloaded them. Um, so just be sure to remember where you put them because these are the files that we're going to be using um, to make the game. So in order to extract them, uh, they might not look like this um, just because I use a particular file extractor. It's called 7 but I don't think you need it uh, for this tutorial. So all you really need to do is just right click them and just press extract all for both of the files. Easy. And now we have our two files here. One of them is the game engine, which is right here. Um, it's just uh, executable file and a manual, which we don't really need for this tutorial, but um, you can go through it if you'd like. But yeah, no installation process needed for this. It's just straight click on it and then we can use it, which is awesome, super lightweight. And then the assets is a file of assets that I've created for this project. Um, this is pretty much where we're gonna have all of our like items, weapons, player sounds. Just remember where you save these. But I guess in saying that, let's just go straight into the engine. So we'll click on it. And then this is the boot up screen. Greetings, welcome to Easy FPS Editor. To begin, create a new project or open an existing one. Well, we don't have any projects yet. So how do I create a project? Well, all you gotta do is just go to the top left corner here where it says projects and then just create a new project. And all it's gonna ask you to do is just um, name your project. So let's just call it shooting game. Super awesome name, totally original. And then project was created successfully, which is awesome. So, okay. And yet still nothing. You may be thinking, where's the game? What do I do? Well, bro, all you gotta do, or well, all I should say you kind of need is a map. A map is kind of like the 3D area that you'll be editing in and adding your assets or entities or objects, everything that's needed in the game, you kind of need a map to like a 3D space to um, work in. So to do that, all you have to do is just go to this top tab right here called maps. And there's two buttons here. One of them is to open a map, but we don't have any maps. So um, this button right here, yeah, create a new map. It's good that they have these to hover over just so you know what, what the buttons do. This one here. And then now it's pretty much just giving me a screen to be like, where do you want to save this map? Well, um, one thing I should tell you is, like I said, remember where you put it because where the engine is installed, it'll have a projects file. And this projects file, uh, it'll save pretty much all the assets that you have in your game. So for me, I kind of want to save the map in this file. See, as you can see here, it's already got my little original named file shooting game. So we'll click on that there should be a folder called maps. This will hold all of our assets, but for now we can just go into maps and we'll name it like test area or anything you'd like. And then we'll save it and easy. We've got some stuff now, blue screen, all these buttons now and all this stuff. It's like, man, where do I start now? Well, I know there's quite a lot on the screen, but we'll just start off with something simple. And let's just say, I kind of want to uh, draw a map. I kind of want to just draw an area that I can run around in. So how do I do that? Well, um, this engine specifically uses tiles and to create a tile, we need textures. 
So how do I get textures? Well, if you go to the top left, right next to projects, you'll see an import resources um, button. You can click that and there'll be an import textures button. So if we click that, it'll show us two tabs. One of them will be walls and floors. This is pretty much self-explanatory. This one will hold our textures for our floors and this one is for our walls. So the things that we'll be colliding with. So we'll start with walls there. So if I click this file just down here and I navigate to where we saved that asset folder. We have a folder that says textures and walls here. And then we have all these textures that I've made. So we can just highlight all of them by clicking and dragging over all of them and then press open. And now they're all added here. And then I'll click this button here for floors. We'll navigate out of this file and go to floors and pretty much do the same thing. Now all of our textures have been added in. We can press accept. Yeah, awesome. And now it's like, where's my tiles? Where's my textures? Well, my friend, there's a tab right here called tiles. If we just click that. And now we have all of the textures that we added in. So there's walls here and floors here. So let's say I want a floor. We'll go with this black tile here. And if I start drawing, just by clicking, you can see that I'm drawing a map, which is pretty awesome. So we got that down. And now I want a wall. So we'll go to this one here. We'll click to draw a wall. As you can see with walls, it has a red outline, just so you know that it is a wall. Obviously, because since we're looking at it from a top down view, it's kind of hard to tell that it's a wall in a three dimensional space, but that's like an indicator for you to be able to know. And yeah, so look, now we've got a, we've got a wall and we've got a floor. And now I want to kind of run around this space. Yeah, how do I do that? Well, we need a player object, I believe. So to get a player object, all you really need to do is come to this tab right here called objects. And then as you can see, these are all the objects that you can chuck in your game. Um, but this is the one we really need right here, player. Note that the player, um, you can only have one existing player object in every map, any space within the game. So it's good practice just to just, if you're wanting to move them, delete the previous one and put this one down. Put only one, sorry because I think you can put multiple here. Yeah. So we don't want that. So let me just right click that. Sorry, also to remove tiles or objects or anything, it's pretty much just right click. So left click to place, right click to remove. But yeah, we've got our little player here now. So I wanna play this now. Where is the play button so I can test out my little room? Well, there's a button right here. If I hover over it, test game, this yellow and blue icon. So if we click that right here, it'll boot up into the a main menu screen. And this is super helpful because it all comes built into the engine. We don't have to code settings ourselves or, or like a load and save system, which is pretty awesome. If, as you can see here, if we press settings, um, already built into this engine, it has awesome settings that you can adjust. So um, like, uh, this is for video. This is also for video here, but um, the game itself, uh, audio input, which is mouse sensitivity, and then keyboard inputs. So these can be remapped if you want to um, change the keys in which we use, um, which is pretty cool. But yeah, if you wanted to apply all these settings, make sure you press apply before you leave. Otherwise, they won't um, come into effect. But yeah, let's go click new game. And yeah, as you can see, I can already move around in my space, which is pretty mean. So we've got a map, we've got a player that can move around. He can also jump with spacebar. I'm using WASD to move around. And if you click shift or hold shift, I should say, he'll crouch. But yeah, those are the basic controls. Um, and yeah, we have a player, which is awesome. And then in order to exit out of it, all we have to do is press exit and then exit game. That was quick as. <laughs> so I guess Jumping into the player itself, um, how do we edit parameters when it comes to the player? Well, there are two tabs um, I want you guys to kind of like um, get familiar with when um, uh, talking about the player. We have our game settings and there's a player config tab right here. If we click that, 
these are the parameters for or variables that affect the player or the player's variables so 16 radius it'll pretty much be how big the um player is speed set at 128 obviously how fast the character is view bob scale that pretty much just affects the bobbing speed of your head based on your movement and then uh height is 42 i believe these are all in pixels when it comes to the sizes but um yeah so that is the first we'll change that back to one and i might want to speed me up just a little bit 150. um these are pretty much yeah the settings for the character or player i should say and then another tab i want you to focus on is import resources and then import player resources now if we click this this will allow us to add all of the sounds um contextual sounds that the player will have in the game as well as adding a shadow image actually let me show this as an example so the player itself he has this little circle as a shadow um, you can um, make your own shadow in any photo editing or um, drawing you can even make this an ms paint if you'd like and then import your image straight into the game so you'll be able to have a custom shadow but for now we'll just leave it it does the job um, but something I do want to do is um, add sounds to the player. So we'll go back to our, we'll import resources, player resources, and then we'll import all of these sounds. So we'll go file import and look, it boots us up straight back into the assets folder that we created. Um, so let's go to player sounds. And the first sound was hurt sound. So let's go hurt sound here. File was imported successfully. Okay. And I'll pretty much just do this for all of the objects. Oh, sorry, all of the sounds. Awesome. So we have all those settings in there now, or files, I should say. So we can just click accept and they should all be loaded into the game. So if I just click here to test the game one more time, go new game. Awesome. And now we've got sounds. He's got a footstep sound. No sounds when he's crouching. Jump. Jump and land. And yeah, it's kind of already getting like a polished feel just because our player character um, yeah, has audio. So we'll exit out of that. And yeah, so those are pretty much the basics when it comes to a little bit of the mapping uh, tools as well as um, player. And I guess for the next video, I'll jump a little bit more in depth when it comes to the mapping itself. And I'll also uh, go into making our first uh, weapon. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and all that YouTube stuff. And yeah.